Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to build a dashboard using Tableau and FileMaker. Now I'm going to use the free version of Tableau, it's uh, called Tableau Public or Tableau Desktop uh, Public Edition and it's just fine for connecting to the new data connector in FileMaker Server 16. Now you'll get a startup page similar to this when you open up Tableau for the first time. You can see over on the left you've got different ways of connecting to data. You can connect to a file or you can connect to a server. And the one we want here is the second one down underneath connect to a server. Uh, it's called Web Data Connector. It'll open up a dialog box where we can put in the URL that points to the FileMaker server that has our data obviously. Now my good friend Johan Hedman at Adetiki in Sweden has set up FileMaker Server 16 on a secure connection. You can see the HTTPS, um, Adetiki's domain name, and then the rest of it there, FMI REST Tableau FM Connector, is pretty much the standard URL that most implementations will use because in FileMaker Server 16, you've got yourself a pre-made connector from Tableau to FileMaker. So we type in the database name, uh, the layout name, the account name we're going to log on with, uh, and of course the password that we need to get into that data. Click on import FileMaker data, and after a few seconds you'll have a screen showing you all the different fields that you've got in your FileMaker database. And clicking on uh, refresh the data, we can see the data from the FileMaker database as well. Come on down here and click on uh, sheet one, and we can start creating our dashboard. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the profit and I want to check out how much money uh, this company is making. And it looks like it's $174,000 over about three years. So let's look at that profit again um, and we'll base it uh, on time. But this time let's look a little bit closer into the quarters as well. And let's look at it uh, here on a chart instead of a table. So we've now got a table and a chart of profit. Let's look at profit again, but let's look at it by customers this time. And let's use a chart to show us that we don't see anything terribly interesting. Uh, it's a pretty good spread of profit across the various customers. If you look at employees, which are probably our sales reps, same again, pretty good spread of profit. But if we look at products, we see something very interesting. There is some negative profit down the bottom. Uh, if we color the profit, we can get an even better look if we, let's say, make negative uh, red and positive green. Uh, we can see very clearly there's some products that are losing money. So this is something interesting we're going to want to uh, show the owners uh, when we get around to giving them a look at this dashboard. Let's duplicate this sheet and this time we're going to create a similar chart but this is to do with product size. We can see here as well that small products um, have got a negative profit. If we look at brand, uh, it's pretty average. So let's just get the color back to automatic uh, we don't need to see red here because these are all positive profits for brand and we're pretty much ready to make our dashboard. At the top we'll put the table of profit by year, then we'll put the chart of profit by quarter. Over there on the right we're going to put uh, the profit by product. Uh, now underneath the chart let's whack in the profit by product size, then underneath that the profit by product brand. Uh, let's get rid of all these titles because they're just getting in the way of the dashboard. I don't need them. So I'm going to hide all of the titles, get rid of that legend. I don't need that either. Uh, I'm going to resize the layout a bit, make it a bit wider so it fits on my screen. Um, I might actually go into these and resize them too. The table can be smaller at the top. Uh, we'll fill it to fit the entire area. Make the chart a little bit smaller. Uh, size, we'll make that, that looks pretty good as it is, and brand, we'll resize that. Okay, that all looks pretty good. <clears throat> Let's have them all uh, fill their entire windows. This just makes it look a little bit neater um, as we use it on different devices. So we're going to fit all of these to their entire view. Uh, let's do it over here on the product list as well. So we've got our dashboard pretty much working. Now the great thing about this is that it's interactive. So if I just select all of the profit, or all the products I should say that have made a positive profit, and then click this filter button, it means all of the other windows will react to changes I make. Let's do the same thing over here where we've got product size, connect all the filters up, and in fact, uh, we don't need to do it anywhere else, just those two. So when we make changes to these two areas of the dashboard, the rest of the dashboard changes uh, alongside of it. Now, we can create ourselves a storyboard. 
So the first thing I'd like to do is show the customer that their actual profit based on the data they've given me is 175,000 uh, US dollars. So our actual profit is 174. Now if I duplicate this dashboard and make one change, which is to exclude small products. So what if we were to only sell medium and large products? Well, as you can see, our profit becomes 209,000 rather than 174. So just by getting rid of our small products, a bit of skew rationalization, we could, could have increased our profit um, not to mention the savings of not having to sell and not having to administer all of the business to sell small products. So we've got an increase of $35,000, which is about a 20% increase just by removing our small products. Can we go further than this? Sure we can. Let's have a look over here at the products again, and there's still a few products making a loss. So what if we just pick all of the products that actually sold for a profit? If we do that, our total profit comes in at 229,000. So again, we've increased our profit um, for those three years of operation had we not sold any products that are being sold at a loss. So our increase now isn't 35,000, it's gone up to 229, so that's uh, 55,000, uh, which is about a 30%, 32% um, increase in our profit. So we could have made 32% more profit just by cleverly selecting which products we sell. If we go back to the starting point, let's get rid of this title because that's not required. And let's save uh, this whole thing up to a web server. Uh, I need to log on with my Tableau account. This is a free account, as I say, it's part of Tableau Public. Um, just get my email and password in there. And this is going to now upload, uh, not just the dashboard, but this storyboard that has different points uh, selected in the dashboard. So let's just give the whole thing a name um, so that when it saves it up onto the server, we know how to get back to it. Uh, this will take a few seconds for it to just um, upload it. Once that's done, uh, it opens it up automatically in a web browser for us. So here it is, here's our uh, storyboard uh, loaded up into our web browser. Now we can uh, check this out. We can click on different parts of the story if we are the client and not only do we see the commentary that's at the top, uh, but we can understand how those numbers came together. In fact, the user can even continue interacting with the dashboard as they look at the storyboard. So in this case here, perhaps the customer uh, wants to see what it would be like to sell um, all of the products that made a profit, but these two little products down the bottom here, he or she wants to continue selling those two products, even though there is at a slight loss. Uh, we can see what the total profit is, uh, thereby actually interacting with this dashboard that we've just seen and we've understood the story given to us. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.